Hi, it's Will. Today we're going to talk about what uh, you need in your backcountry vehicle. Uh, if you're hunting elk or anything out west and uh, you're going to take your vehicle off-road. Um, I've run into a few problems over the years and I thought, well, you know, someone coming from down south like I am, uh, I was actually born up north, but I mean, uh, other people that might come from down south and aren't sure of really what they should do and uh, what they need to come out to go elk hunting or mule deer hunting or anything in the backcountry, I thought I'd give you some tips and some things that I think that, that I carry that you should probably carry in your vehicle. First thing I'm gonna start with is the high lift jack. Um, I got mine mounted here on the back of my Jeep. Uh, buy you a real high lift jack. Uh, you don't have to get a cover like that. I've had this one for years. You may not ever need it, but if you have a pickup truck or a Jeep, I highly recommend <clears throat> you get one of these. Uh, they work great. Uh, they can get you out of some stuck uh, situations and whatnot. Uh, I also recommend you get the uh, accessory kit for the high lift jack. Uh, what comes in this kit, I've had this for 25 years and I've actually never used the kit. But, uh, that's because I have winches front and rear on, on this Jeep. Uh, I also have a winch down in my Grand Cherokee. I'm a big believer in having a winch. If you can't afford that, I get it. You don't need it. You can do other things and I'm going to explain that later. But what you can do with the high lift jack, it comes with uh, a couple chains and an adapter that goes to the top of the high lift jack. And you can ratchet three feet at a time readjust the chain, readjust your uh, toe strap, and you can pull yourself out of a situation with your high lift jack. Uh, there's probably other videos online about that, and I'm not gonna show that here, because I've actually never had to do that. Uh, like I said, because I do have winches in mine. I do highly recommend that you do get the accessory kit with your high lift jack, and uh, also get you a platform for it. Uh, these work really good, uh, it comes from high lift. You put, it goes on the base, uh, you're in snow, mud, sand, whatever, this keeps a solid platform for the jack to jack in so your jack doesn't slip out from underneath it. I also carry this with me, and we're gonna go over here and talk about uh, my other Jeep. <clears throat> I have a high lift scissors jack in this one. This is a Grand Cherokee that we like taking. Uh, the Hulk over there sucks a lot of gas, and uh, we just find that this one is just so much better in gas and four wheels really exceptionally well. I use this, I use the extreme high lift jack that I have in here with this one, and uh, it helps actually uh, give me a more still platform, mud, snow, whatever, and actually gives me an extra than two inches of lift to that scissors jack or whatever I'm using. I highly recommend you get one of those. <clears throat> the other thing uh, that I recommend that you do or get is a set of these track mats. Now, these are uh, cheap ones here. These are only $57. And uh, these also have the built-in base for the jack in it. Um, I, I, I only buy the $57 ones. Uh, they're inexpensive, they have handles on. These won't last forever. They last a couple seasons, but to have them with you for 57 bucks is a good investment. Uh, I, I've had some last longer, but what usually happens with these and where the guys tear them up is they stick them over a, uh, say a washout in, on the logging road and uh, your know, water or something has come through, uh, looks like a little trench, and they try to fill a gap in with it and drive over. Well, you can do that, but what will eventually happen is they'll bow right here in the center and they'll turn into a V and they'll get stress points here and they'll usually snap. Uh, what I found to do to save these to make them, this, this is a new set, the ones I broke before. What I found to do is take your chainsaw, cut your small piece of uh, you know, tree that's down or, or tree that's already there, a piece of uh, logging wood, stick it underneath in that trench and then it supports it a little bit better so you can drive over those trenches uh, and get over things. These work great in snow. Uh, if, if you don't have real good snow tires or you just get stuck in the snow and you don't have, uh, you don't have a winch or anything, these are awesome for getting traction, mud and snow, and even sand, but a real good in snow. They have these uh, dimples on them that hold up really well. Um, I put ropes on them, you know, some old military rope, but uh, you basically have handles on them. You can spend, you know, $300 and get a set of Max Tracks. They're very good. They're more pliable, and they can take the bends over these holes. You can look those up online yourself. But for $57, bucks, you can not you can't beat those, you know. Uh, the next thing I recommend is uh, Snow Joe. Uh, they're inexpensive. They're like 20 bucks. They're made in the East Coast. Aluminum, and it, it will expand. Uh, you can get in snow or sand or mud, and this thing gives you a nice uh, little shovel to get out of. Um, it works pretty good. It's only like 20 bucks. Uh, this is a better one. Backcountry, this one's not titanium. It's really light. Uh, this is a military, actually, one. Uh, I painted it because it was yellow uh, for snow recovery. It'll fold down also. It comes apart, and you can put this in your pack, actually. But it's really extremely light, uh, extremely durable. Uh, it help you in snow if you gotta dig yourself out or whatever. Always have a shovel, one or the other. Uh, this one's got a little bit bigger blade. You, you know, get more snow with it, whatever. I should recommend you have a collapsible shovel 
one that's durable, one that's going to hold up. If you get up there and there's snow, whatever, you get stuck, you want to have one. Uh, <clears throat> the other thing I recommend, you, if you're from down south, you might not think about, is a, a snow brush with a scraper on it. <laughs> you know, you're not going to need this where we're at here in Texas, but the snow gets built up, you're going to want this. Uh, it helps squeeze it off and brush it off. You don't want to get the one I got for my wife. You get just a basic one with a squeegee on it and a scraper. It helps get the snow off after it snows. It's a great thing to have. Other thing I recommend, one wiper blade, at least for the driver's side. Now, most people replace both wiper blades if they're smart before they go up out west, especially if you're driving from down south. But what happens is, let me show you here my wife's car. <clears throat> what you want to do is bend them here at the, whenever you stop at your, your uh, hunt site or even at your hotel while you're up uh, Colorado, Montana, Wyoming, Idaho, whatever. Uh, elk season, even during both season sometimes, it gets snow and ice up. What happens is these will, when they're down, these will freeze to the windshield. And when you go to turn on your car and flatten, you rip up your rubber on it. So if you forget, like most people do, make sure when you stop at your hunt site, when you stop at your hotel, put them up like that at the elbow bend, both of them. And then the event that you do forget, you have got a backup blade for at least your driver's side. It's a cheap investment, five bucks. Make sure you keep one. The other thing I recommend you have is a come along. You don't have to have one of these, especially I have a winch, so I don't use this much anymore. Uh, but this one here, you know, it, it's just enough to pull you out of a rut. If you're stuck in a rut and you don't have a winch, it's you use a, a toe strap, you can get yourself out of a rut. They're not expensive. You can get a decent one like that for 35 bucks, and it, it will help you. Um, if you have a winch, of course, you're going to need the accessories for that. Uh, a dampener to keep the cable for case it snaps, throw over dampener. Uh, a set of gloves for the winch. If you got a winch, you probably know this stuff already. And this video isn't for you guys that live out west because most of you guys out west know all this stuff by putting the wire blades up. Or if you live north like I did, you already know it. This is for the guys that are, are going to go elk hunting or uh, mule deer hunting for the first time or whatever. And uh, that's what happens, you know. Uh, recommend you get a, a strap like this, a uh, reflective strap in case you're out there changing your stuff on out there on the road. And uh, it's just a good idea so you don't get uh, run over. Uh, a dedicated headlamp just for your bag, it, just for the back of the car. And uh, well, our neighbors are at it today, aren't they? Sorry about the, you know, we neighbors, right? Um, just get your dedicated one. I know you, you'll ever want to have one for hunting, but just keep this one just in your car with a little extended beam. So if you're out there and you got to change your tire or whatever, this is Streamlight. Uh, you know, keep it separate so that you've got just one just for your work bag. And this is just my work bag. Uh, another set of gloves, you know, for working on the car if you need to. Leather gloves, they don't cost anything. Uh, in this bag, basically I have two toe straps. I have a set of jumper cables on one side. And I have a uh, 30 foot, 30,000 pound toe strap. I got two of those in this bag. So I've got a total of 60 foot. They're not expensive, They're, they don't cost you a lot of money. Even if you don't have a winch and you have tow hooks, you're gonna to wanna to have these because if you come up a logging road and you don't have a chainsaw, which I'm gonna talk about next, you'll wanna have that tow strap, hook your tow straps uh, and pull that uh, tree out of the roadway so you can get to your hunt site. You don't wanna ruin your hunt site you've been dreaming about getting to and you found it on X maps or you found a base maps and you get up there. You can't get up there because you don't have it. Always carry a set of uh, jumper cables and get you an extra long set. These, this is a 30 foot length on these heavy duty, good cables. Spend, spend, sometimes I, I like to do cheap stuff, save money, but on jumper cables, spend the money, get you a good set uh, so they don't tear up on you. Other thing I, I recommend, highly recommend, uh, this is made of Dyneema. It's a heavy duty, just like this one here on the back. Uh, you can hook this to the frame or anywhere on the, on the frame and pull us 30,000 pounds of stress. So if you got a, your vehicle stuck in the snow or mud and you got to pull it a little bit sideways to get traction or to get it up out of that rut, this will actually do the trick and it'll go around the frame, it weighs nothing. This will do the same thing. It's, it's uh, metal, it's heavy duty, heavy duty and it's pretty good. Uh, I recommend you get one of these hitches also that goes in your tow hitch if you have a tow hitch. They don't cost much. This whole system here is like 40 bucks to put this on it. It allows you a place from the back to pull your vehicle if you need to or, or a jacket from the back. I recommend you get that too also. Just like I say, 40 bucks, goes in the back, you can put a lock on if you want. Dyneema strap, I think these are 25 bucks, not very expensive at all. Uh, can't fix the flat, truck truck tires, whatever, at least one can. Reason for this, I have a patch kit, I'm gonna explain that too, a plug kit. You want this because when you get that flat, you may be on the middle of the road and you may not be able to get uh, off the road to plug your kit. So 
Here's where I highly recommend you spend your money the right way. If you're gonna get a plug kit, you can go to Walmart and get one, but I recommend you spend the 40 bucks and get you one like this. It's an ARB plug kit. Uh, what's nice about this, it come, it's really good kit, it's durable. I've had this for years. It works great, comes with its own tire, real good tire gauge, uh, extra paste to glue them in, it comes with extra, uh, these are already pre-lubed pre uh, with a tar, everything ready to go. Uh, extra valve stem pieces, if your valve stem goes out, you can't beat this kit for like 40 bucks from ARB. I don't know what they are, it costs now, but if you get a chance, spend the money, get you a good one. Don't, don't buy a cheap Walmart one for five bucks. And it, it might work and it might get you out, but might is a big word when you're out in the middle of nowhere and you know you don't have phone signal and you can't you know what i mean it's just it's worth the money i say spend the money get it you can't fix flat like i say is you get you're off the hop the main highway and you get flat that way you can get off the road and then you can plug your tire so i, I keep one can just for that uh again tree saver all right reason i have this two reasons it's uh, this is a worn uh inexpensive like 25 bucks and why you use this is you don't want to tear up your toe strap and get tears of these microfibers on it and then when you're pulling yourself out your toe strap rips apart use these around the trees it's not just protect the tree i'm not a tree hugger uh which is a good idea to protect the tree anyway but it's basically to protect your cables from getting tore up uh you put this around the tree or if you're going to pull a tree out of the roadway which happens a lot actually this is my this is a brand new one i just bought i kind of tore up with one before but you pull a tree out of the roadway uh, these are a good thing to have like 30 bucks 25 30 bucks don't use your toe strap around the tree and try to pull it. You'll put tears in it. It'll, your toe strap will be gone in no time. <clears throat> and where else I su suggest you spend money is right here. This is a high speed. This one cost me like 70 bucks. It is an air compressor that will inflate one of the huge tires on this Jeep in a matter of like four minutes, less than four minutes. Uh, it's a high speed compressor. It just has two battery clips with a uh, a 30 foot line they go directly to the battery you put this little filter on it and this sucker gets so fast so f airs up so quick you can air up a tire in less than three minutes a full size completely dead tire uh it's a great thing to have you can get these at uh uh i want to say northern tool i think it's the last place i saw these, these clips you've had this so long the clips are broken again another 30 foot strap in the bottom as you can see uh down there in the bottom have another one i, I recommend you get some of these things and keep them in your car uh, in your truck whether it be an SUV like we have here or whatever it's just a good idea to have this stuff it's gonna save your butt something like this is really good to have uh, 30,000 pounds when you go to put it on you just pull this out slip the head through like so slide it over the knob and when it pulls down when you pull pressure on it locks down on itself 25 bucks you can't you can't beat that invest in that it's worth the money Okay, the other things I want you to recommend that you have in my vehicle here, move these out of the way, snow chains, if you're going up, I don't care if you're going to uh, bow hunting in Idaho in 2016, snow came in, two feet of snow, locked a lot of people in. Peer, these are peerless, they're only $100 a pair to fit this Jeep. The ones for the other Jeep are a lot more expensive. I have a set of four in the back in these bins. Uh, full size spare you want to get, for sure, uh, regular t, t iron tire iron. Don't waste your time with the cheap, L cheapos. Get you a good four-way. Uh, carry yourself a, I guess they call them a pruning shear. Works great on trees that are down or across the road. You want to cut the branches off so you can pull it easier. Works. It does real quick work. Uh, another thing, maybe some people laugh at this, but I tell you what, it's a cold steel little camp axe. It works good on those trees that are across the road. You can cut off some of the smaller branches with it. I've sharpened this thing several times. It works great for a cheap $20 axe, and I haven't broken it. I beat the living snot out of this thing. Uh, it's a good little investment to have. I keep it down in here, out of the way. Uh, also, with your chains, make sure you get the tensioners. So when you put the chains on, uh, there's a rubber tensioning loop that goes around with little hooks. Uh, holds the chains, pulls them tight so that if you have to go on the main roads or whatever with the chains, they're not flopping all over. You don't lose your chain or damage your chains. Uh, you know, that, that's a few of the things I think you should have. The other thing you want to consider is besides doing that is uh, you're going to want to make sure that your wiper fluid that you put in your car is for all season. Don't be a dummy like me down in Texas all this time and using regular, regular wiper fluid. I got up there and my whole lines were froze up. I couldn't even get the thing to work until after the engine had been running for like 45 minutes. <clears throat> so make sure 
you get the four season stuff. You can find it at Home Depot, uh, as my brother calls it, Homeless Depot. Uh, you can get it there, and it, it works great at uh, keeping it from freezing up on you. Just a tip for us people that live down south. And I used to live up north, you think I'd know that. The last thing I recommend, there's some guys out there that are pro hunters that think you, they don't like power tools for some reason. They think that it's gonna suck the life out of them if they, you know, if they use a power tool. Well, I tell you, I've used power tools all my life. I've been in the military for 20 years. I've used a lot of uh, power tools and I'm still breathing. I'm gonna be 60 years old here real, real soon. Get you, a, get you a cheap chainsaw. This one here is a, a still saw. Uh, it's only $179 saw, it's a little dirty. You see the uh, women's napkins down there? They help, it puts off a lot of the uh, bar oil and so it drips afterwards. So you put some uh, ladies napkins down there, it helps absorb the oil. Uh, you get a small can of gas like this from Still. Uh, keep it in this can. It's all. It's not going to leak out. It's going to keep it even in the back of my Jeep here. It won't cause any issues. And then you get all your other stuff. Uh, I recommend you get some of these. A must-have. Uh, if you're cutting through a tree across the roadway and you got to cut it, and it's under tension, and you make your cut, you should always cut from the bottom, of course. Make your secondary cut from the top with your chainsaw so that your blade doesn't get pinched. Your bar. This piece here. For those of you. I'm, most of you all probably know a chainsaw and how it works, but you probably know more than I do, a lot of you. But you want to have one of these to slide in on the side to keep your, your bar from being jammed and your chain from being jammed up while you're cutting log if you happen to make a mistake and not cut far enough up on your lower cut before you do your upper cut. Get you, the, like 10 bucks, get you a couple of these different sizes. Uh, cleaning kit for it. Anyway, all this in here, the bar oil, everything can go in the case. It's not going to uh, leak out or cause any problems. It has a protective sheath on it. And you can get all that for under two hundred dollars, you know, and that's cheap insurance if you have planned all summer to go hunting and you get up that logging road. And this happened to me. You get up there, oh, you know, trees cross the road, and like, holy cow, no one's been up here. Forest Service haven't been up here. You're gonna have to pull. You you can pull out so many if you got a winch, and I got a winch. That's good too. But it's easier to cut them if they're still connected. You're gonna have to either chop it with an axe or you're gonna quick do it with a chainsaw. It makes it a lot easier. Uh, I highly recommend you spend you know $179 to get you a good chainsaw. Harsvarna makes a good chainsaw. Still makes an excellent chainsaw. Anyone, I'm, I those two are my you know my personal picks. Uh, I recommend you do that. You know, uh, chainsaws are good to have. You're gonna I'm telling you, it can make the difference. You saving your trip or not? Get you a hard case, put it in, and uh, take her. One last thing I'm gonna show you that I believe in. Go to your military surplus store, get you one of these five gallon water jugs. Uh, now, you're not going to fill this and drive all the way up from down south Alabama, wherever you're coming from, Texas, with water. When you get up to your site, you know, I used to stay in a hotel to climatize, whether it be Montana, Wyoming, uh, a day before I go into the hunt site. Fill this up with water at the hotel, use you a strap to strap it down, and then you've got this water for drinking if you don't get to a stream right away, or for you, you blow holes in your radiator. You can duct tape that hole up on the radiator and you can put water in it and it'll save your hunt. Because you can run your car on water as long as, as long as it's not freezing out where you're going to freeze the block or anything. But you can at least get you back to town by putting water in it and you got drinking water if you need it. I highly recommend you do that. Uh, for tying it down, I like the Night Eyes hand tie instead of a ratchet strap because you pull it tight and it locks down. And uh, you can, it gets pretty tight, so Night Eyes. And when you lock it down to the side, it's not going to cut into it like a ratchet strap. You go too tight, you can crack the can, even though they're durable. Uh, I go with the Night Eyes hand one. You don't, you don't need to use ratchet if you want. You got a pickup or whatever. Uh, but I like those better. Uh, that's my video. I hope that helped you a little bit. Remember to, you know, bring your uh, wiper blades up. Carry a wiper blade for your driver's side. Uh, I recommend a chainsaw for sure. Come along if you don't have a winch. At least two 30-foot tow straps with you. Uh, a plug kit for sure. Uh, an air pump. Uh, you know, these are things that you definitely want to do. And make sure you change out your fluid and your wiper fluid. Thank you.